the real reason celebrities are leaving Twitter. Mr. Reagan. All right, so the other day, Elton John went on his Twitter and he wrote, All my life, I have tried to use music to bring people together. Yet, it saddens me to see how misinformation is now being used to divide our world. I've decided to no longer use Twitter, given their recent change in policy which will allow misinformation to flourish unchecked. Elon Musk actually responded to Elton John's tweet, and he wrote, I love your music. Hope you come back. Is there any misinformation in particular that you're concerned about? Naturally, Elton John did not respond to this. Did he see it? Of course he saw it. Uh, but he doesn't have any misinformation to cite, because this is, of course, uh, leftist posturing. Mark Ruffalo also left Twitter. He wrote, uh, as Twitter grows more unpredictable and harmful to marginalized groups. <laughs> He's got the language down, man. I'm exploring some other avenues for us to connect. I'm excited to continue to foster and be in our great community. That doesn't make any sense. I'm excited to continue to foster and be in our great community. Awkwardly expressed idea there, Mark. I'm not quite sure what you're trying to say. All right. If you'd like to come along for the ride, here's where to find me. And he's listed some other Twitter alternatives, which will not be successful. And of course, everybody's been laughing at leftists for having very thin skin and not being able to deal with the fact that they actually have to see conservative ideas for once in their lives. But I think that the tweet that was the most illustrative of the problem here with leftists, uh, and the reason that the celebrities are leaving, is actually from David Hogg. David Hogg is not really a celebrity. He's more of a political activist. So da David Hogg writes, Musk can talk all he wants about bias at Twitter, but since he's taken over, my timeline has been full of right-wingers who I don't follow. Am I the only person this is happening to? Uh, <laughs> And the responses to this are, as you would expect, right? Uh, Graham Allen writes, you literally just proved that there was active suppression of speech from the right. You're seeing it because that is no longer happening. This guy, Nixon, writes, uh, my timeline was full of beta cucks like you prior. Welcome. <laughs> and, and there's a lot of uh, tweets like that. Just like, welcome to the party, pal. Welcome. <laughs> this this kind of idea like, you know, this is what conservatives have endured since the beginning of Twitter, basically. Apparently at first, for a long time ago, Twitter used to be more or less uh, like the Wild West. It was a free-for-all. Anybody could say anything they wanted. Then after um, Donald Trump was elected president, it got crazy, right? They started shadow banning conservatives, outright suspending conservative accounts, stuff like that. That's, that's when I got on Twitter. So I've never known a time in which I wasn't inundated with like, leftist tweets, leftists trying to promote some kind of like leftist propaganda, and a, a time before conservatives were suppressed. I, I don't know this Twitter. I've never, ex I've never known this Twitter. But David Hogg knows a Twitter in which he's free from any op opposing ideas. And that's really the point here. The point, the, this is a much bigger problem than just Twitter. And that is the crux of this video. I'm tr I want to explain why I believe that leftists are so delicate when it comes to hearing conservative ideas, so much so that they think it's violence against marginalized groups, as Ruffalo puts it. Why somebody like David Hogg is so disconcerted even just by seeing conservative tweets, because I've seen a lot of tweets like David Hogg's. This is not the first tweet that I've seen like his. Leftists are losing their minds just because they're seeing conservatives show up in their Twitter feed. And this is not just like an issue with leftists being delicate. This is a societal problem. It's, a, it's not just nationwide, it's international. It's a huge problem for leftists, but it's a huge problem for society in general. And I call it the leftist bubble. I'll explain in one moment. First, I have to sell you something. $2,000. That is where gold is headed. The growth will continue through 2023, with gold prices remaining elevated at an average price of $2,086 per ounce. All this according to the Bank of America. And it looks like they're right. At the beginning of December, gold crossed $1,800, and it's still climbing. If this year has taught us anything, is that tangible assets are the only assets that you can count on, like gold. 
it's time to open a gold IRA. Crypto keeps tanking, stocks are too volatile. Gold in your IRA is steady. So what are you waiting for? It's not too late. Thousands of people have retired comfortably with the help of Noble Gold Investments and their gold and silver IRAs. Now, if you are a hesitant investor, but one of the handful of Americans who can go for gold and silver in your IRA, now is the time to act. And if you get in before the end of this month, you'll bag an incredible free three ounce silver American virtue coin with every qualified IRA of $20,000 or above. You can't go wrong with Noble Gold Investments. Call 877-646-5347 to find out more or visit noblegoldinvestments.com. Imagine that you as a conservative, maybe you are a Christian, maybe you have old fashioned traditional beliefs. Imagine waking up in an America where... You get up, you get dressed, maybe you have the radio on or something like that. Maybe the TV's on in the background. And the news that you're getting, the songs that you're hearing on the radio, they're all conservative. And then you go to work, and everybody at your work is a conservative, Republican. They all agree with you uh, philosophically, politically. They all agree with you about everything. When you go to lunch, and the guy at the subway is talking to you about politics, some conservative ideas, expressing some ideas to you. You guys have a laugh, you agree, and you go back to work. And then you get done with work, you go home, maybe you go on social media, and all of the ads on social media, they are conservative, appropriate ads. Everybody on your Twitter feed is remarking about the same kinds of conservative, strong conservative ideas. People are talking about God and Christmas. Then maybe you're turning down for bed. You decide to turn the TV on. And every movie that you see, every single movie that you see on Netflix, everything that's recommended to you, every TV show that's available, and every ad on TV, it's all strong, positive, conservative content. Nothing left-wing. The kind of co traditional conservative ideas that you would have expected to see in like the 1950s. All right. Obviously, there's modern technology. You've got modern special effects and stuff like that. But... It's all, so, so there's something contemporary about it, but it's all traditional values. Everything is conservative. Imagine that day. Imagine living that day. That would be a hell of a luxury. Just one day. Could you imagine a day like that? Now, maybe you live in Texas, and maybe occasionally you do have a day like that. I don't. I never have a day like that. <laughs> I never have a day like that. And yeah, maybe that has something to do with my job. But I, I love... Uh, good storytelling. I love a good TV show or a good movie. I even love a good TV ad if it's if it's good enough. We haven't really had a lot of good content in a long time. And I actually have a new channel called Alpha Critic in which I talk a little bit about this and I review the new projects that come out. I actually have a new video about the new Guardians of the Galaxy Christmas special which I highly recommend everybody watching because it's a new project I can actually recommend. It's actually really, really good. So... Go to Alpha Critic, check that out. Subscribe to that channel. It's a good channel. I, I think it's going to become, a, I think it's going to blow up. I've had the flu, so I haven't ha been able to make a lot of videos lately, but I'm going to be posting on there a lot in the near future. But anyway, the point I'm trying to make is what a luxury. What a luxury to live a day without being inundated by leftist insanity. And this used to be the way America was. Like back in the 1940s, back in the 1950s, even to some degree into the 60s, you just didn't have extreme radical left ideology being pumped into our households every single day. You didn't have these billboards advocating licentious behavior. You didn't have something like TikTok, which was like essentially corrupting our culture. You didn't have all this stuff in those days. But since I would say the 1960s, it's progressively gotten worse. And I think that's, that's where the term progressive comes from, right? It comes from the country progressively getting worse. <laughs> but we can't have that. We can't have that. Why can we not have that? Well, leftists have a lot of power in America, right? You have leftists saturating the advertising industry. You have leftists saturating TV. You have leftists saturating film. So we can't enjoy entertainment without there being a strong leftist message almost always. And then there's just a lot of Democrat voters. They're low information voters. They don't, they don't really know, they don't understand that they're being tricked. They don't understand that they're being lied to. And so they accept a lot of this stuff. So just in real life, you know, you'll go to the subway and you'll be ordering your sandwich. And you know, almost for sure, 90% chance the teenager that's making your sandwich is totally bought into every leftist idea. Right. They're totally, you know, and they're like an environmental activist. They're probably a vegan, <laughs> although they're, they're making sandwiches with meat. So maybe not. they bought into the whole transgender thing. 
They're totally convinced that America is deeply racist against black people. They have all of these delusions that are fed to them by the left constantly. And so you're constantly running into these people. You're constantly being inundated with these messages. And then on social media, they will push onto us leftist ideas all the time because the leftists who are in charge, any leftist who has a job, their job is to like either censor or promote messages on social media. A lot of these folks, they really genuinely believe that they need to push leftist ideas onto us ignorant conservatives who just don't understand these leftist messages. And now here's the, the real trick, that they also feel like they need to hide conservative messages from leftists. Now, why do they think that they need to hide them? Leftists view conservative ideas very much like an illness, like a virus. If you were to hear conservative ideas, you can catch the virus. Like maybe some, some leftists maybe are more susceptible than other leftists in terms of catching the virus of conservative ideas. But they treat us as if we are infected with some kind of a disease. And they have to protect themselves from this disease by using algorithms to suppress conservative content. This is the luxurious life of a leftist in the 21st century. They do not have to hear conservative ideas. This is the reality for leftists. They wake up in the morning, they turn, they turn on the radio, they turn on the TV, the news, whatever it is, and they constantly get inundated with their own ideas, ideas that they already have. They live in the leftist bubble. They never have to hear a conservative idea. They go to work, they interact only with other leftists. They go to Subway, they're pretty sure that the guy at Subway agrees with them, right? Because these are people, they live in these cities. They live in cosmopolitan areas where they know other leftists live. And they hide from conservative ideas. And they threaten conservatives with being fired from their job if they dare express any conservative ideas. And so even if they do work with a conservative, they probably would never know it. Because the conservative would not dare ever express a conservative idea. Then they go home, they go onto social media and... Companies like Twitter, before Elon Musk took over, would hide all of these conservative ideas from them. And so these leftists, they all think that conservative ideas are just these like random hillbillies in America that they never see or meet or probably don't even know how to use Twitter. And the few that do get on Twitter and know how to use it, they're just corrupt and evil, right? Uh, then they might turn on the TV before they go to bed. Every single message is a leftist idea. Every movie, every ad, everything. Because these leftists, they control the media, right? So you have this problem where these leftists really are in a bubble. And it's not just Twitter. It's YouTube. It's Facebook. It's Instagram. It's TikTok. It's, it's Netflix. It's NBC. It's CNN. All of these different ways in which people communicate and get information, get the news, interact with other human beings... It's all created, and we don't really understand this as conservatives because we live with leftist ideas constantly. We live with opposing ideas every single day of our lives. So we can't even really imagine, we can't fathom what it's like to live in a world in which we have no opposing ideas challenging us every single day. We, we, don't, we don't get that. We don't live in that world. Leftists do live in that world. They are in the leftist bubble. They do not have to hear conservative ideas ever. So when a leftist is on Twitter... Elon Musk takes over and he goes, you know what? We're going to try to figure out how to stop suppressing conservative ideas. Everybody's going to start hearing everybody else's ideas on Twitter. Um, and I think this started happening even before Elon Musk did anything because I noticed there was a change in Twitter like as soon as he took over. So I think some of the engineers at Twitter were kind of covering their tracks by releasing some of the, the suppression that I, I don't even think um, Elon Musk will ever find out about it because they just like... Whoosh, made some of it go away before they could get caught, right? But anyway, so now a lot of leftists are seeing conservative ideas pop up in their feed, right? Conservatives are popping up in their Twitter feed and they're just like, I don't understand. How could this be? In response to David Hogg's tweet, my very favorite response, um, this guy Aaron Nalder posted a quote from Thomas Sowell. Thomas Sowell, obviously one of the best political philosophers in history. He's an economist, but I consider him more of a political philosopher. And Thomas Sowell writes... When people get used to preferential treatment, equal treatment feels like discrimination. That man is so... He has such a great way with words, you know? And that's what it is. This is the crux of the situation here. Leftists have lived in this bubble for so long. I, I would say for at least a couple of decades now, where they really have pushed out conservative ideas, um, especially since Donald Trump 
became president. This started to become done in a much more meticulous way where you could really just live your entire life as a Democrat and really never hear conservative ideas. You could just hide from conservative ideas and never have to listen to them. So Democrats are never challenged, never challenged. And so now when they are being challenged, they're freaking out. They're freaking out. We See, because you guys think... A lot of people are seeing this and they're laughing at Democrats because like, well, you're so delicate. Like, why are you so delicate? I mean, don't you hear conservative ideas from time to time? Don't you have to, you know, don't, don't, like, I don't understand why this is so crazy. It's crazy, guys, because it's not just Twitter. Honestly, like, I can't even, it's really hard for me to imagine a life where I'm not constantly bombarded by things that I think are ugly and wrong. I mean, I, I mean, that's that's the job that I have and it's terrible and it's, it's frustrating and it's unpleasant. And actually, when I... There was a point doing this show, doing the Mr. Reagan show, where I just thought, I don't want to do this anymore. I am sick of seeing these, you know, blue-haired, crazy Marxist lunatics screaming and yelling about fascism and the patriarchy and losing their minds. It feels like I'm watching the degradation of society. I'm watching society collapse. And it was so dis depressing you know it's just depressing and so I found that sometimes I just have to kind of like step away it's like too much it's too much to watch especially after the 2020 election to me the 2020 election was the most depressing moment because I just thought like wow okay however which way Joe Biden won Democrats now control this country and Democrats are unbelievably destructive like it really looks like the country is going to just crumble and that's what it looks like is happening. I mean, think about everything that's happened since Joe Biden took over. I mean, the, the country does seem to be collapsing. I mean, I still have hope. I still will fight. We all have to fight constantly to try to win America back and do better. But what's really fascinating, what was really interesting is, is just how completely alien hearing opposing ideas is for Democrats. I mean... I hadn't really thought about how, what a luxury that was, not having to hear opposing ideas, until I started reading these tweets. And, and this David Hogg one really sparked this idea, like, what would it be like to live a day and not hear a leftist idea at all? And Democrats do this every single day. Every single day. They just live without conservative influences, without any opposing ideas. So... I think that this is a major part of the problem and we need to figure this out. We need to figure out how do we stop this from happening in our society where it's becoming much easier. I would say that before Trump was elected, maybe 20 years ago, they didn't really have the technology to completely guard Democrats against conservative ideas, but now they do. Now everything's digital. You can algorithmically suppress conservative ideas so much that leftists never have to see the, these ideas. You can kind of bifurcate society and say, okay, these people will only listen to this kind of content. And we've known this is a problem for a long time because on, on YouTube, you can kind of like say what you like and then it'll feed you more stuff that you like. But it seems that, that at some point, probably after the, Donald Trump was elected, everything seemed to shift. No longer was it, you can just see what you like. It's like, you can just see what you like if you're a Democrat, but if you're a Republican, you can see what you like, but you, you also have to see all this stuff from Democrats. And Democrats were completely shielded from any conservative idea. Well, we definitely need to fix this. We need to find a way to to make it so that, I mean, I don't want to say Democrats have to hear conservative ideas, but it kind of seems like we need to figure out a way not to force Democrats to hear conservative ideas, but definitely to stop conservative ideas from being suppressed as much as they are. The, the Twitter model seems to be right. Whatever Elon Musk is doing, forcing conservative ideas into the ether, allowing Democrats to be exposed to them a little bit, I think that's probably the answer. I'm not really sure how you enforce that with like YouTube and Facebook. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is, but somehow leftists have to be exposed to conservative ideas. We can't keep going down this path of leftists just completely living in this leftist bubble. You see this in colleges, but before now, once you left college, you would be exposed to the real world in corporations and you would sort of be forced to kind of contend with different kinds of people with different ideas. But now corporations are completely being filled up with these leftists. And so now these folks, they go to college, they move into like New York City, they start working for these leftist corporations, they only meet other leftists, they see leftist ideas on television and on their social media and in ads and in films, and they really have no exposure. And then if they go to say like London or they go to Berlin or something like that, 
most of the people they're going to interact with are going to be leftists also. And so there's just like leftist, 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 leftist. They, they just live in a sort of leftist utopia where they never have to face any other ideas. And how do you fix that? How do you fix it? I don't know. If you guys have any ideas about how to force leftists to face reality and face concepts that contradict their own ideas about the world, let me know. I don't know how to fix it. I don't know how to fix it. I would love to do it, but I just don't know what the answer is. Maybe we have to start making really good entertainment that promotes conservative ideas. I don't know. I don't know. It almost seems hopeless. And I hate to end a video like that, but that's kind of what it looks like. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Until next time, subscribe to my Alpha Critic channel. I will be talking about a lot of the new uh, films and TV shows coming out. I've got one coming out uh, shortly about, I probably already posted it, about Willow and how they absolutely destroyed that movie from my childhood, which I loved. I loved that movie Willow when I was a kid. They just ruined it in this television version. <laughs> All right, well, that's it for me. And remember, it's not that the liberal friends are ignorant. It's just they know so much. That is not so. Good night. This is the specter our well-meaning liberal friends refuse to face, that their policy of accommodation is appeasement. If we continue to accommodate, continue to back and retreat, therein lies the road to war. You and I know and do not believe that life is so dear and peace so sweet as to be purchased at the price of chains and slavery.